If you're ever struggling to stay motivated, then this video is for you. Have you ever had something that you wanted to achieve and you, know, you were, were heavily engaged, like you wanted this thing, it was in your heart, you're like, you're raring, you're ready to go, and then you know you go to bed one night, you make a list of things you wanna do, and you're ready to go, and you think, hey, tomorrow I'm gonna get up and go after this thing, and then you get up the next day, and all of a sudden, it's just, it's not in you. You don't feel like it. You know, the, the drive to do whatever you wanna do is just, all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, pulled away. You know, what, what I've found is, we all kind of struggle to keep on task. Like we all kind of struggle to have these motivations to actually keep us moving. And we struggle to have it endure, like to go for a long period of time. So we'll have these things for short lived like bursts and spurts, and then all of a sudden they pull away. And then what happens is we look back later on and we say we wanted this goal, we wanted to go after it, but we didn't. And then now what happens, we get to this point where we feel like, you know, we weren't capable of doing it maybe, or we weren't worthy, like we should, should have had it in the first place, or you know, we just, it wasn't something that was really that big for us. We kind of make excuses of why we didn't go after it. But no matter what happens, you get to this point where you've defeated yourself. You get this self-defeat feeling of like, ah, I just can't do it. And then some people reach in and they just tell you I have a stupid goal in the first place. They make you feel like, ah, it's no big deal. And then later on you look back and say, you know what, no matter what, I didn't get it. The challenge we run into is really, we, we, how do we stay focused? How do we stay driven? How do we stay motivated throughout all the problems? And so for me, I started looking back and saying, you know, what is it that happens when I have this issue? Like when, when I'm dealing with not having the I, I ability to kind of keep myself moving and goals I've set for myself, what is that? And so I started doing these things I call till talks. I actually, I get in the phone with people and I ask them a bunch of questions and I want to kind of till the soil of their mind to find out what's going on. And one of the big things I ask is, you know, what motivates you? What, what, what drives you when you have these goals? And I, I hear one thing, well, what doesn't? Like, what is it that stops you? And I hear something else. I've been able to take that and kind of pull it down to two specific areas for motivation. For me, I've found that you have escalating and enduring motivation. See, escalating motivation, when you have this pump up, this real quick rise, it's, it's a fast paced climb, your energy's rising, your body's moving, like you just, you're energized in a way where you've never felt before, and you just, you can't wait to get going, and you're on, and you're on, right? And then all of a sudden, something happens, and it just pulls it from you. And now everything that you felt, is gone. It's when you wake up in the morning and you have that feeling of like, ah, I just, I don't feel like it today. What I've found is that really essentially is that, that 80% emotion, 20% purpose. And what I mean by that is, when you look at 80, 20, it's usually the 20% of what you got to do is like, you know, it's, it's the most important stuff, but so many people spend 80% of their time on things that really don't matter. But you flip that. So when I say 80, 20, if you have an 80% emotion base behind your goal, the emotion can be skewed. It can be pulled away. All of a sudden, you may not feel like it, therefore you just don't do it. And on top of that, people can come in and say, hey, you know, that's a dumb goal, it's stupid. Why are you even going after that? And then when they get into your head, it makes you feel bad. And that feeling drops you down again. So what happens is you, you get to the point of realizing like, ah, it's just, it's an escalating emotion. It feels good and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm motivated for a small bout, but then all of a sudden it pulls away. Then you have enduring motivation. And see, this is the one that allows people to go after amazing things in life and actually get them. See, in, in enduring motivation, you have an 80-20 that's switched. 80% of what you are basing this, this goal on the, the having to attain becomes a purpose. I have to do this. It's, it's purpose-driven and 20% is emotion. So you get up in the morning, you may be like, ah, I really don't want to you know, do that. I may feel like it's not something I want to do, but you have this purpose and it has to be done. A better word I like to use is, it's an obligation. You are obligated to do this. Now, obligation sometimes is a negative term to look at as like, oh, it's obligation, I have to. But I say obligation in the sense of, obligation means it, it has to be done. Good or bad, it has to be done. So for example, if someone wants to have you know, a bunch of money, right? Your, your goal is a bunch of money. If your purpose for having a bunch of money is, is rooted in, you know, I kind of want to buy these things and, you know, that'd be cool. You know, it'd make me feel good, right? It's not going to be as driven and as hard packed in your soul as if it's that money has to be made so my family can survive, so I can feed myself. That becomes a purpose driven. So you get up in the morning, it's not a choice. I don't, it doesn't matter how I feel, I've got to go after it because my life needs it. It's an obligation. When you have an obligation, you push forward, you push all the way to the end of it, no matter what happens. And if somebody comes in and says, 
that's a stupid goal, what are you thinking you shouldn't go after that? It doesn't matter, because for you, it has to be done. You know it has to be done. Therefore, no outside factors affect it, and internally, you have to get it done, because if I don't, things fall apart. The second is, it's understanding what drives you. Now, what I mean by what drives you is, what is your reward system? See, everybody needs to get that kind of, you know, that little bit of love, the push that makes them keep moving because you can have this, this driven purpose of what you want to achieve, but if you don't have the small benchmarks along the way giving you that, you know, that, that feeling of I'm actually accomplishing something, even small, it's hard to stay on task. It's hard to stay progressing the whole way. So the idea is to figure out really what keeps you on track. Like what is, what is needed for you to get there? And so for me, I boiled it down to, to a few different things you can do to get there. One is you gotta choose a goal that is the right goal. You gotta choose one that speaks to you. You can't have one that's just a random. It can't float around in your head. You can't be like, yeah, I kinda like that goal. You gotta choose the right goal. If you choose the right goal that actually has a deep, deep purpose for you, it becomes easy to stay on track because you know it's gotta do more for my mind, it's gotta be more for my heart because it's in me, it's an obligation. Once you get that, you need to commit to it deeply and you gotta connect to it. You gotta connect something in your life to get there. Now, it may not be you know, the biggest thing in the world for a small goal of I wanna to get to class every day this week, but if you can connect that to getting to class every day of the week gets me to where I can actually pass a test. Passing a test helps me earn my degree. If I earn my degree, I get the job of my dreams, and if I get the job of my dreams, I have X of whatever it is you want. You've now connected that to the bigger purpose-driven goal. Therefore, it's, I gotta to get to class. There's no choice, there's no, it's an obligation to get to class. So you gotta attach the things and connect the dots to get there. Thirdly, you gotta write it down. Most people do not write their goals down, therefore it doesn't come into existence. It's not written down, it's not spoken, it's, it's just kind of there. And so what happens is, it can easily be put back. You can easily take the goal you've had and push it back in your brain a little bit, like, yeah, no big deal, give yourself excuses. Now for me, I realized that there's studies that have been done on this. Now there's a study done by Harvard in the MBA program and I found that they had a group of people and they asked these group of people, how many of you guys have goals? 90% of them had no goals, 10% raised their hand. They said, okay, if you guys, you know, you 10% raised your hand, how many of you guys actually have them written down? 3% raised their hand. They revisited the same group of people years later and said, okay, you know, what are you guys doing? The people who just had goals actually made double the money the people who had no goals. The people who had written them down made as much as four times more money over their lifetime in that short spout that they, other people did. So they actually, because they had them written down, had it into existence, it had to get done. Then, the key one is, what is your reward system? What is the system that gives you that feeling of, I'm accomplishing something? There are three of them. One is gonna be pay. One's gonna be, what is it I'm getting paid to do this? You know, some people at work say, if I'm gonna you know, get my payment, then you know, it's, it's gonna be what I need to keep myself moving. And some people are driven that way. Whether it's good or bad, it's a reality. If it's at home and you set a goal personally, outside of work, it may be something where you've set this goal, I gotta see some kind of income coming back from that. You know, it may, be, it may not be something where I need someone to pay me, but I need to make sure I'm seeing the income come to feel like it's worth my time. Outside of, the, of that, it's gonna be praise. I need someone to praise me. Now, not that I need it, but some people need someone to give them that you know, appreciation, that praise of good job, a pat in the back. At work, it could be someone saying, hey, great job with that report. Hey, I saw you do that good job with the kid or that, that new employee or whatever it is, but you get that appreciation. At home, it could be saying, you know, I need someone in my family to show appreciation for me going after this goal. It could be you, honestly, getting an accountability partner. Someone is behind you saying, hey, you're doing a good job or hey, you're not doing a good job to keep you pushing. Then when you do get to that small benchmark you set for yourself, you can get them to say, hey, you did a good job. You got there. Some people need that. For me, I need what's called personal pride. Personal pride means it doesn't matter what I get paid. It doesn't matter who pats me on the back. All that matters for me is that I did a good job the way I'm supposed to do it. That's all that matters to me. I don't need someone to say, hey, good job, bad job. I don't really don't need that. I need to know that I did my absolute best for somebody. When I get to that point of I'm, I'm personally okay and happy, I can sleep at night, and that drives me. And so for a person like that, you gotta write things down and you gotta track your progress to see what you've done so you can say, hey, look, I got this done and that done and that done. I'm doing a pretty good job. So for you, when you go home today, you know, review whatever goals you have in your life. Review what you have written down or what you don't have written down in your, in your brain and start thinking about, is this goal something that is more emotional based or more purpose based? 
You want to shift from being 80% emotion to 80% purpose. Find whatever it is in your life that is an obligation for you to get done. It has to happen because you know it's a tool you have that, that you know you got to get out to the world. If it's a business idea you want to take to market, take it to market because the world needs these things. The world needs what you have in your brain. Make it a purposeful obligation. Then find out what rewards you. Find out what you like, like what gives you that feeling of accomplishment, even in a small amount, a small dose. Do you need someone to pay you more or do you need to see more money coming in? Do you need someone to praise you or give you appreciation? Or do you just need it for yourself? Find out what those things are and then apply those to your life in areas where you know that they're gonna be you know, looked at and, and so that for you, you can say, I'm gonna keep myself moving because I'm not gonna let the ball drop. That's the big plan, that's the big purpose. So, I hope this helped you. By all means, if you want any more information about me, go to anthonytrucks.com. Follow me on my social media sites. Uh, my goal is only to help people. That's really what I felt like I was putting this planet to do. For me, this is my obligation. My obligation is to actually create something and create a world that I have given to people. And my world is my family, my world is people that are like yourself watching these videos because um, so many people as I grew up didn't do this for me. And I feel like God gave me some tools to be able to do what it is I do and I'm, I'm not going to let those things you know, go unused and not be something that I'm appreciating and giving back to the world. So uh, again, thank you very much. And always remember you can trust your hustle to live an unexpected life.